Over the past year or so, I've uploaded quite a few tutorial videos on the topic of how to create low and medium content books using the BookBolt Studio. And no matter how many videos I create, my comment section is always filled with questions about things that I didn't cover in the video. So in this video, I'm going to answer the seven most frequently asked questions that I get about using the BookBolt Studio. So if you're somebody who uses BookBolt to create your own low content books, then stick around because there may be a few nuggets of wisdom in this video that you just might find useful. Hey guys, Craig here. Hope everybody's doing well. Okay, so as somebody who's been working in desktop publishing as well as graphic design software for well over 10 years, when I'm creating my tutorials, I often forget to cover some of the simpler aspects of using this software. Not realizing that you're all coming to my videos possessing different skill levels, I sometimes just assume that you already know this stuff, so I skip it. And it's not until I read the comment section of my video after it's published that I realize we're not all on the same page. So in this video, I'm going to answer the seven most frequently asked questions that I get about creating low content books using BookBolt. And if you decide after watching this video that you want to give BookBolt a try, just know that I have an affiliate link to the BookBolt sign up page in the description section of this video. And if you use my promo code Craig Babin when you sign up, you'll get 20% off of your subscription price, regardless of which subscription you purchase. Okay, so this first question is one that I used to get all of the time, but ever since BookBolt upgraded their software and made this task a lot easier, I really don't get it that much anymore, but I thought I'd cover the question anyway. So the first question is, how do you add and delete pages in the BookBolt Studio? Now it wasn't that long ago that there was actually a trick to doing this, but BookBolt has since made changes to their software that has made this task much easier to do. So if you have an interior page that you want to delete, all you have to do is place your cursor over the page that you want to delete in the left hand page menu, right click on it and choose delete this page. Now it used to be that you weren't able to delete a page if it was the one that was currently showing on your artboard, but that's been changed. Whether it's on your artboard or not, you can still delete the page. As for adding a page, just simply find the spot that you want to add the page to and click the add page button. And this leads us to question number two. And this is probably one of the most asked questions I get. And it's how do you reorder your pages in the BookBolt Studio? Now ideally, it would be great if we could just drag and drop our pages into the order that we want them to be in. But as of the date of this video, that's not a function that's available in the Studio. Yet. So for now, the easiest way to do it is just to go over to the page menu in the left hand column, find the page that you want to move, as well as the spot where you want to move it to. Then just add a blank page to the spot where you want to move your current page to by clicking the add page button. Then go up to the page you want to move, right click on it and choose clone this page. When the page pop-up menu appears, select the blank page that you just created and then hit the clone button. A copy of the page that you just cloned will now have been placed on that blank page. Now all you have to do is go back up to the original page that you just cloned, right click on it and choose delete this page. Ideally, you want to try to get your pages in the proper order right from the start. But at least it's nice to know that if for some reason you do have to rearrange them a bit, it's not that difficult to do. Okay, let's move on to question number three. Now this next question is another one of those situations where the problem was actually due to the software's limitations, but it has since been fixed by BookBowl in recent upgrades. Kind of. And that question is, how do you get the clue words to display in columns as opposed to one long continuous sentence? Now originally, whenever you generated a word search puzzle, the generator would display the clue words in one big long abbreviated sentence. That has since been changed. You now have the ability in the puzzle options menu to choose between the original linear format and the new column format. Unfortunately, as of the date of this video, they still haven't given us the option to choose how many columns we want our clue words to be broken into. As of right now, the default is three. Now, depending on how you plan to lay your puzzle pages out, you may not want three columns. If it's your intention to put multiple puzzles on one page, then you may only want one column of clue words. Or if you plan on adding graphics to your puzzle pages, you may want to have your clue words displayed in four columns, which would give you more room at the bottom of the page. So I'm going to show you the easiest way to get around that problem. And the first thing you're going to want to do after generating your puzzle is edit the contents. Next, you're going to want to group select all of the individual letters, 
right click on them and then group them together. This will just prevent you from accidentally moving any of them. You can just rename this group to Puzzle. Now the next thing you want to do is hide this group. I'm doing this just so that I have more room to work with. Now before you go any further, make sure that you have the Snap feature turned on at the bottom of the page. Now you'll notice that each of these words are individually grouped. Since we're going to be creating four separate columns, the first thing that I want to do is to find the four longest words, remove them from the columns, and then just set them aside. Now, start moving groups of words over to the left-hand margin on the page, making sure that they snap to that margin. To maintain proper spacing, try moving two or three at a time. You're going to be separating these words into four columns, but I want you to make sure that you insert one of these long words into each one of these four columns. Also, be careful not to insert them in the same spot in each column. So for example, if you place the longest word at the top of the first column, just make sure that the longest word in the second column is not placed at the top of the column. Just place it somewhere further down. So by the time you've created all four columns of clue words, your longest words should all be in different places in each column. Doing this is going to give the columns the illusion of being equally spaced, even though all of the words are different lengths. You'll see what I mean by this in just a minute. Okay, now what I want you to do is group each stack of words together individually. To do that, just group select each individual stack, right click on it, and choose Group Objects. Now the next thing you want to do is place each stack where you want them to be on the page. Some of this is going to have to be done by sight, but we're going to use the Grid tool to help us get the columns as close to perfectly lined up as possible. So what I want you to do next is go over to the Grid tool in the left hand toolbar and choose Add Grid from the pop-up menu. Now for the number of columns, you're going to want to use a really large odd number, like 17. And just use the same number for the rows as well. The reason that I'm using so many columns is because I want to be able to snap my columns to the grid lines, and I want the outside columns to be as narrow as possible when I do that. So as I place each column, I'm just basically leaving one vertical row between each column of words. Now, just click on the grid icon in the left hand toolbar and from the pop up menu, choose Clear Grid. As you can see, all of the columns appear to be equally spaced and they're pretty much sitting in the center of the page as well. What you want to do now is turn your puzzle back on and then group select all of the word columns, right click on them, and group them together. From this point, you're free to arrange your page however you see fit. And no matter how you choose to arrange it, your clue word columns will look perfectly spaced as well as aligned. Okay, let's move on to question number four. Now this next problem is something that quite a few of you have encountered while creating your own puzzle books in the BookBolt Studio. And that is, how to avoid getting the not enough words error message. Now at first glance, this may sound like it has an obvious solution. Just make sure you put enough words in your CSV file, right? But doing that may not be quite enough to avoid that error message. You see, the puzzle generator only has a finite amount of letters to work with in each puzzle. Now, if you're creating puzzles with 20 words, and each word has between 8 and 12 letters in it, even though you're inserting the appropriate amount of words into your CSV file, the puzzle generator may not be able to insert those specific 20 words all into the same puzzle. The situation may arise that the generator just can't make one of those words fit properly into this puzzle. And that will result in you getting the not enough words error. So there are a few things that you can do to make sure that this problem never happens in the first place. And the first thing is to make sure that when you're creating your word search puzzle, that you choose the options to use both diagonal and reverse words. If the generator is only allowed to place words in a vertical, horizontal, and forward direction, then it's going to have limited options when it comes to laying out the puzzle. By turning on both the diagonal and reverse options, you'll be giving the generator more room to play with. The second thing you can do to avoid this error message is to add two extra words in your CSV file for every puzzle you're creating. If for some reason the generator is unable to make a certain word fit into a particular puzzle, giving it one or two more words to choose from will allow it to meet your puzzle demands. In fact, that's the whole purpose of this option right here. If for some reason certain words just don't fit, by turning this on, you're giving the generator permission to just pick a random word that does. Now if the puzzle book you're creating just has a general theme, then this is a great option. But if your book has a specific theme like say Christmas, then you're going to want to make sure that whatever word is used is somehow Christmas related. 
So in that case, you're better off just inserting a few extra words into your CSV file that are theme related right out of the gate. All right, let's go on to question number five. Now this question is more of an opinion question, and that is, which option is best to use as a highlighter for your solution page of your word search puzzles? Now if you're someone who hasn't been inside of the BookBolt Studio in a few months, the options for the solution page have improved immensely. In fact, you now have five options instead of just one, which used to be the individual squares. Those solution pages look like crap. For me personally, I think the best options are either the rectangle outline, which is what most traditional word search solution pages use, or the solid rectangle. If you're going to use the rectangle outline, I recommend that you change the color to a slightly darker gray than the default color, and make sure that the alpha, which is the opacity, is set to 100%. Doing this will make your rounded rectangles far more visible once they're printed. Now in contrast, if you decide to go with the solid rectangles for your solution page, in this case, I would use the default color, only I would lower the opacity down between 50 and 60% alpha. And the reason I would do that is because once the pages are printed, if the highlighting rectangle is too dark, you won't be able to see the letters underneath it, especially when two rectangles overlap one another. By reducing the alpha to around 55%, the rectangles will still be dark enough to see on the printed paper, but not so dark as to hide the letters below them, even when overlapped. That being said, either of the two rectangle options will work just fine. Okay, on to question number six. Now, although the solution to this next question is actually a very simple one, this problem tends to frustrate a lot of first-time users of the BookBolt software. And the question is, how do you get your artboard back to the center of the page after you've finished editing it? So instead of just answering that question by itself, I'm just gonna quickly go over how to maneuver around the artboard inside of the studio. To start off, if you wanna zoom in on your artboard, you can simply just use your middle scroll wheel on your mouse. If you wanna move your artboard around, either up, down, left, or right, simply hold down the space bar on your keyboard and then press down on either your left mouse button or your middle scroll wheel. This will enable you to grab your artboard and move it to wherever you want. Now, once you've moved your artboard, if you ever want to recenter it again, you have two options. The first is to simply go to the bottom of the page and click on this fit button. That will reset your artboard back to the default position. The second option is to simply deselect everything on the artboard by clicking off of it, then right clicking outside of the artboard and choosing reset zoom from the pop-up menu. Doing this will also reset the zoom back to the default position. Okay, let's move on to the final question. Now once again, this final question was something that used to require a few steps in the past, but since the upgrade of the BookBolt software can now be accomplished by simply checking out one single little box. And that is, how do you convert all of your letters to uppercase or lowercase? In the past, you could only do that by using the capitalized letters tool in the text menu but BookBolt has recently given you a second option that appears right inside of the puzzle generator, and that's the capital letters option. If you want all of the letters on your page to be uppercase, just simply make sure that this box is checked off when you're generating your puzzle. Just keep in mind that if you leave this option unchecked, that only your clue words will be lowercased. Your puzzle letters are always gonna be uppercased. If for some reason you want your puzzle letters to be lowercase, then you're going to have to group select them all after choosing to edit your content and then switch them all over to lowercase using your text tool. Which, for aesthetic reasons, I don't recommend that you do. The letters just look much better in uppercase. And one final tip, if you're ever unsure about what a certain tool does in the BookBolt Studio, just know that you can always go up to the Help tab in the top menu and choose Turn on Walkthrough Bubbles from the drop-down menu. What this does is turns on a speech bubble guide so that whenever you have something selected on your artboard, it will walk you through and explain all of the tools that you have available to you for that particular selection. Now this feature can get really annoying really fast. So once you're done with it, just go back up to the help tab in the top menu and from the drop down, choose turn off walkthrough bubbles. This tool can actually come in handy when you're first getting started in the BookBolt Studio. Okay, so hopefully this video has answered at least some of the questions that you guys have asked me after watching my previous videos about BookBolt. Now, if this is the first video you're seeing on my channel and you wanna watch more of my BookBolt videos, or you just wanna learn more about self-publishing in general, then be sure and check out my playlist, Self-Publishing 101. It contains everything you'll need to get you started on your own self-publishing journey. And you can find a link to that playlist right here. Until next time, take care.